Former President Donald Trump is back on the campaign trail after his historic arraignment yesterday. He pleaded not guilty to 37 federal criminal charges, including 31 counts of willful retention of national defense information. After being arraigned in Miami, he flew to his Bedminster, New Jersey golf course and addressed a crowd of supporters. CBS News investigative reporter Graham Cates joins us now with more on this. And Graham, it's, it's important to speak to you today because you're one of the few people who is physically inside the courtroom. Walk us through what it was like, what you noticed from the president's body language or the kind of things that we don't see um, in transcripts and written down. Mm. You know, this was really unlike any uh, court hearing that I've ever been to, and, and I think probably that's ever happened. Uh, when he was charged the, the first time in New York, we all sat there and waited for him, and he walked in, and a minute later, the hearing started, and it kind of progressed like a normal hearing. But there was this, uh, I was just talking to uh, one of the few members of the general public who attended, and I've, I've interviewed a few of them, and they all talked about how outside the courthouse, it was this kind of raucous rally, but inside this courtroom, when we walked in, uh, former President Trump was already sitting there, and it was about 20 minutes before the hearing began. So about 40 people get into the hearing, and Trump is in the room, and it's completely quiet the entire time. There's a few whispers here and there, but you're sitting in a room with former President Donald Trump, and no one, not even he, is talking for 20 minutes waiting for the judge to come. And then, I mean, there's no doubt that he was taking this very seriously. You know, he was paying attention. He was kind of... Um, leaning forward mm -hmm. throughout much of it. Um, but one, one person who was there, a, a lawyer who kind of just likes to check out the big cases in town and managed to get into the room, said, you know, at one point I had to remind myself, I'm sitting here watching the former president of the United States who is being charged with these incredible crimes. And he said, you know, this was really surreal. I've been watching cases for decades. He said he attended one of the Watergate burglar trials. And he said, I just had to remind myself, this was so surreal, what I'm witnessing right now. Wow. Uh, Graham, as we mentioned, President Trump or former President Trump is already talking to his supporters. Another uh, an, a situation like this would have killed another candidate. He manages to always seem to try and turn it to his advantage. Did he seem at all phased by his arraignment? This was the second time where we're used to this public image of Donald Trump where he's kind of, um, he's, he's loud, he, he says what he thinks constantly, uh, but in these court hearings, he is absolutely quiet unless he's addressed. He turned around and he looked at some reporters as he was leaving, but he didn't say a word. He just looked very, very serious. He, he under... There's no doubt that he and his team understand the gravity of this case and the other one in terms of what it means for him and potentially for his future. It's a really important distinction you make as well because we're seeing footage of when he headed to that restaurant immediately after being arraigned and it seemed like a campaign event and his speech in Bedminster, a campaign event. But in reality, there are serious legal challenges, plural, the former president is facing. Not just this, but he was also, just over the past six months, found liable for sexually abusing columnist E. Jean Carroll. He's been formally charged on dozens of felony counts at the state and federal level. What is the extent of the seriousness of all that he faces? Yeah, you know, and you only covered the half of it, right? So uh, six months ago, two of his companies were found guilty of 17 That's felonies. Right. And he has two more uh, uh, investigations where we don't know what's going to happen with those. So he's facing very serious charges. So far, a total of 71 felony counts across his two criminal cases. And we have no idea how this is going to play out. If, he, if he's found not guilty, how it affects his reputation anyway. If he's found guilty, what do you do in terms of sentencing when it's a former president. These are all issues that we, we really have never played out in American history, and we don't know how they're, go how they're going to kind of unfold before us over the next year or so. And I guess that the, in the worst case, it would be prison time, but in the best case scenario, he's found not guilty of these incidents, can continue to run for president, and perhaps continue behavior he's been, he's been alleged to commit already. Yeah, I mean, but we're still talking about multiple trials along the way. I mean, it's, right. it's really something else. Well, Graham Cates, great to have you here after such a historic moment for the country. Appreciate it. Thank you.